Hello everyone and welcome to Lesson 6. In this lecture, the term sculpture will be first defined, and then the major types and categories will also be covered. The last part will focus on the evolution of sculpting in the Philippines, and we will also recall the national artists under this category of art. Sculpture is from the Latin word sculpere, which means to carve. It is the branch of visual arts that operates in three dimensions. It is one of the plastic arts. Durable sculptural processes originally used carving and modeling only in stone, metal, ceramics, wood, and other pliable materials. But since modernism, there has been an almost complete freedom of materials and process. A wide variety of materials may be worked by removal such as carving, assembled by welding or modeling, or molded or cast. Sculpture in stone survives far better than those in perishable materials, and they often represent the majority of ancient cultures. In contrast, traditions of sculpture in wood have unfortunately vanished almost entirely. Most ancient sculptures were brightly painted and their colors have only faded over time. A good example would be the ancient sculpture and architecture of ancient Greece which were actually brightly and elaborately painted. The only reason it appears white is because of burial conditions, aging, and overzealous cleaning. Actually, the neat white surfaces of sculptures by famous Renaissance artists such as Michelangelo, who echoed the Greco-Roman style, would have been considered unfinished by an ancient Greek artist. The basic traditional forms of 3D art or sculpture are freestanding sculpture, which is surrounded on all sides by space, and relief sculpture, where the design remains attached to a background, typically stone or wood. Reliefs are classified according to the height of the figure's projection or its detachment from the background. And so relief sculpture may be classified as either low or high relief. Low relief is also called bas relief or basso relievo. And such sculptures have clear contour lines but are noticeably attached still to the plane or to the background. High reliefs, on the other hand, are also called alto relievo. And these are often resembling freestanding sculptures since the most prominent elements of the composition are dented or rendered at more than half in the round against the background. You may refer to the example photos on this slide. This is a freestanding sculpture. This is a low relief sculpture while well, this one is a high relief sculpture. As mentioned in slide 3, modernism has paved way to complete freedom in terms of used materials and processes. Before the 20th century, sculpture was actually considered primarily an art of solid form or mass. However, the focus of attention has eventually shifted. Present-day sculptors use any materials and methods that will serve their purposes. The art of sculpture can no longer be identified with any special materials or techniques. Also, the immobility of a solid sculpture is no longer a standard. For example, kinetic sculpture considers mobility or movement as essential element to the art of sculpting. Marcel Duchamp's 1913 bicycle, the one you see here, is generally considered the first of such modern 
sculptural type. Sculptures fall into four basic categories. They may be either cast, carved, assembled, or molded. Molding is a process by which a liquid material is usually poured into a mold, which contains a hollow cavity of the desired shape and then allowed to solidify. Carving, on the other hand, uses the subtractive process to cut away areas from a larger mass and is the oldest method used for three-dimensional work. Chisels are used and other sharp tools as well. Artists carve away material until the ultimate form of the work is achieved. The process of assemblage or construction uses recycled or found manufactured or altered objects to build form. Artists would weld, glue, bold, bolt, and wire together individual pieces. Lastly, the process of modeling or molding is the method wherein you can either add or subtract parts. Soft materials such as clay, wax, paper mache, and plaster are used because these materials are supposed to be pushed, pulled, pinched, or poured into place in order to create the desired form. Filipino sculptures have undergone an evolution in shape, form, content, and mediums. Like other cultures, the first sculptures created by Philippine native cultures were primitive. These primitive sculptures utilized native materials such as stone and clay. The sculptures are as well created to depict normal life and acts of worship. Colors were limited in these primitive works. The transitional sculpture movements in the Philippines between the primitives and the modern movements were influenced, of course, by outside cultures and internal evolutions. In the middle of the transition between the primitive and the most modern sculptures was the 19th century art movement. The hero of this sculpture movement was Guillermo Tolentino. His most popular are the pieces Bonifacio Monument and the UP Oblation. He is one of the two national artists of the Philippines for sculpting. The Philippines, as of today, has only two national artists under the category of sculpting. You have encountered them already in Lesson 3. And both, both artists received the recognition while they were still alive. Guillermo Tolentino was awarded in 1973 while his student, Napoleon Abueva, received the honor in 1976. It's the same year when his mentor died. Abueva is considered the father of modern Philippine sculpture. This is the end of Lecture 6. For additional reading, you may visit these websites. Thank you for listening.